pull the live chat over. We're going to do a chat overlay. So we're going to kind of get condensed down a little bit. And then as people are joining the live stream and talking in the chat, we'll see any chat comments that come from your channel if it's live on your channel and any chat okay. that comes from my channel and it'll merge them into one chat feed right there on the screen that we can see as we're going all right so. somebody's done this before i see <laughs> only once only once you... it took three attempts but only once <laughs> no worries I am really excited. So hello, everybody. Welcome to Friday night. I have got Mark back here with me. If you guys remember from a while ago, Mark, also known as the Quilting Marine, joined me for a little bit of Q&A. We just had a little chat session back in August. And I had mentioned during that time that I wanted to do a quilt of valor. And I'm going to give you full disclosure right now. I'm not doing a full quilt in this episode. We're going to do one block. And the block that we're going to work on tonight is a churn dash. Mark's got it above his shoulder. He can point it out right there. We're going to work on that because as far as I've heard, the Churn Dash is the official Quilt of Valor block. Is that right, Mark? From what I understand, I haven't done much research on it, and nor have I done many Churn blocks. I, I haven't done very many myself. Oh, okay. But well, it, se it seems it, like it's an easy block that we'll be able to get through tonight. Yeah, I think it's a great block to work on, especially for a new quilter who we love. Yep, 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 yep. I do have some cutting instructions. If you go over to my website, sobecca.com, in the upper right hand corner, there's a link that says pattern. And there will be in that folder just one entry because it's brand new. It's a brand new folder, but it says double churn dash. And I've given you some cutting and assembly instructions that are intended to go along with this video. If you want to make the block the way I'm going to make it, I'm going to make a nine inch double churn dash, and Mark is going to make a 13 inch monster churn dash. Yay! <laughs> big quilts, big black. <laughs> there you go. So I'm not sure. I'm not sure if you guys are seeing this from Mark's live stream. It looks like you are. Good, awesome. It is working. Yes. Okay. So we're gonna get right into it. But before we do, Mark, do you want to give the crew on my channel a little bit of introduction so they know who you are? Oh, okay. So my name is Mark. Uh, I'm the quilt marine. I've been quilting for about six years now. And I keep accurate count on how many years I've been quilting because I started quilting on my grandson's birthday. So he's six. I'm quilting for six years. There you um, go. I love quilting. Uh, I kind of fell in love with it because it helped me with dealing with some PTSD issues that I have. And I wanted to, you know, share it with other veterans and, and, and show them there's other ways to deal with some of the trauma in their lives. Yeah, I, for sure. And that's that's so important. Isn't that what you talked? Well, maybe I think you did crumb piece quilting on the live yes. stream with Missouri Star, but that that's a uh, quilting as a form of therapy is definitely something I can relate to. That's right. I, so I'm totally on board. Whatever your triggers are, whatever it is you're dealing with in life, whether it's just stress from your job, PTSD, maybe you suffer from depression. I feel like having a creative outlet and my preferred method is definitely sewing and quilting. It just gives you a way to kind of Zen. You know what I mean? You get centered. Yes. Yes. So. And it's, it's definitely a way of uh, centering myself. I can come in here and, and, and for hours and lose track of time and a day. And before you know it, I have two quilt tops done and my wife's wondering when I'm coming out of the room. <laughs> I get that too. Last night after dinner was over, Jason asked me if I, um, I asked Jason if he wanted to play a board game and he was like, sure, we could, we could get out a chess board. And I looked at him and I said, okay. And then he just sat there at the table and didn't move. And I didn't move. And he was like, you could just go to your sewing room. That's where you want to be. I was like, okay, bye. <laughs> so I get you. <laughs> so do you, I want to showcase more of like what you're doing and I want to just kind of open it up for, really just a back and forth dialogue as we're creating tonight. So I've got my cutting instructions on my website. So I'm not going to kind of walk you through all that because there's already a page out on my website that you can get to. And after this video is over, I will link it in the first comment down below this video if you're watching the replay. But since you've got a 13 incher, why don't you walk us through your cutting instructions? So if somebody wants to make the monster turn dash, we know, we know what to cut. No worries. So um, basically I used, um, I have um, Tonga Treats Honor 
It's the um, shortcake that we have. And I, I just went in there and picked out some things that I thought would, would contrast very well. I went with the red, of course we have red, white, and blue, so I went with that. So I have two 10 inch pieces here. I have this one, and I have a red. And you're gonna need also, you know, a single five inch, five by five. Okay. So all I'm doing is putting the pieces together, face right sides facing, and we're gonna we're gonna cut it up into fours. So like you're gonna get four five inch squares out of each of those two ten inch pieces. Yeah. Awesome. Yes. We'll them. start cutting. We're gonna go together like 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 these. Okay. This okay. is gonna be done in like ten minutes, and then we're gonna have nothing else yeah. to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I hope we get some questions. Yeah. <laughs> so, so you know, I've been I've been working on them because I'm building I'm building one using uh the Marpat pattern that um, Marines wear in the camouflage utilities. So I'm building oh. it for Marines, and um, you know I've, I've I've been putting pieces together. So just just to show off a, a, a couple of pieces. So I have so in the Marpat pattern, there's you know three major colors and my outer edges i'm going to be using those colors so i have the black i have a green a brown and a tan so we're going to be putting a quilt together that'll be now okay so we'll be sewing that on the quilt marine channel <laughs> yeah, yes you will yes you will so if you want together. to see how that goes together go to his channel make sure you're subscribed to watching the video yeah the centerpiece will be like uh with the blue and the red and Marines know what that represents. The red is the blood stripe that is on uh, NCO's dress blue trousers. Okay. Anyway, and what is the... I, I... No, no, I want to know all the things. What is the... <laughs> so the blue is the dress blue and the red yeah. is the blood stripe? Yeah, when you see Marines wearing... Enlisted Marines wearing dress blue uniforms, the NCOs are identified by a blood stripe that runs down the center line of the trousers. Those yeah. Marines who aren't who aren't NCOs will not have this blood strike. Huh. So Marines that are staff NCOs have authorized to wear white trousers. They can also wear blue, but they also have the blood strike. So this this quilt that I'm putting together is going to be for uh, a, a friend of mine who was a corporal in the Marine Corps, and, and that's what we're going with. That's awesome. So spoiler alert: I will tell you that two things. When I was when I went to high school, I went to a high school named Kennedy High School. So everything was patriotic. Eagle was our mascot. Red, white, and blue were our colors, of course. And I was a band geek and we had the marching band uniform and the trousers were like that navy blue with that red stripe down the leg. And I used to think I was so cool because <laughs> I looked like a Marine. <laughs> so Where did you know you feel already, huh? Yeah, it, I, I, um, I did apply, and before the recruiter could come to my home, I said, no, thank you. I, I was a lot more fit back then, but I realized I didn't want people telling me what to do, and I didn't know how I could handle it, so I thought it would be better served somewhere else. <laughs> well, I was, I was the opposite. I was, I was out of control, so I needed somebody to tell me what to do. That's what I needed, and, <laughs> and I, I loved it. I loved every minute of it, and, and I would actually go back if I could. How long were you in? 20 years. So Man, you retired, retired. I retired, retired as a gunnery sergeant, E7. Nice, nice. <laughs> so we were talking for just a couple minutes before the live stream started. I told Mark when I lived closer to the Pentagon, all I really heard were like the military choppers going back and forth from the Pentagon. But now I live closer to Quantico Marine Base than I do the Pentagon. And I didn't hear anything for a long time until a few weeks ago when we started hearing them drilling and doing live fire overnight. And we're laying in bed one night and we're like, what is that noise? Is that thunder? It's not raining. What's going no, 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 no. There's a whole part of the website for Quantico that's dedicated to noise advisories, and I had yeah. no clue that was a thing. <laughs> they, they shut it down. Shut it down. 
hour though, right? Right around 10 o'clock? It should be around 10 o'clock, right? Or yeah, no? yeah. It, it, it does say that they, like they noted that there could be overnight activities, uh -huh. but about 10 o'clock it dies down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 10 o'clock is yeah. tapped. <laughs> All right, Mark, you're cutting your five inch squares. Yeah, yeah, so, all right, so I have my 10 inches. I'm going to cut them in half, and then I'm going to cut it in half again. I'm going to keep it real easy, okay? I, you know, I, I prey on uh, smarter, not harder, okay? So I can try to keep Amen. this up. Cut that in half, and we're going to go your other way, okay? All right, so I got to count. One, two, four, five. Make sure. What is that? Measure twice, cut once, right? That's the model. That's right. That's right. Believe me, I, I should know that by heart because <laughs> I've made quite a few miscuts in my time. Same. <laughs> Same. Hence, henceforth, my mantra, it's only fabric and it's only thread. That's right. Your block just gets smaller. You're fine. Just right. or <laughs> attach another little piece on because when it's all put together, nobody's going to see it. They'll never know. They'll never know. They'll, They'll never all, know. How will they know? Opals have their own little personality, right? So that's right. All right. That's so right. I have our four pieces. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to grab the first two. All right. And now we got blue and red, so I'm going to decide whether or not I'm going to have what's going to be in the middle or what's going to be in the center track. So on this one, got red, so we're going to go with blue this time. All right, so what I'm going to do is on, on my um, square, I'm going to take the top half and fold it in half and just make a, a, a finger crease. That's all I'm going to do, just a little finger crease to keep me on track. Okay. Okay, and I'm going to open it back up. Now on either side of this crease, I'm gonna put um, a, a stitch line, a quarter inch away from that crease on either side. I'm gonna do it okay. two times, okay? Okay. So I'm gonna go on and to the crusty dusty brother. And this is where I think I've heard Jenny Doan say a couple of times that you sew in the valley, not on the ridge, right? Yeah. Sewing in that crease you made? Yeah. So we're gonna, on the other side of the crease, measure away a, a quarter of an inch. Okay, so you should have a, a stitch line just like that on either side of the crease. Okay, and we can see it. And right down the middle on the crease, we're gonna cut that, okay? So let's cut it, let's go ahead. All right, now you can use scissors. Now here, sometimes I use my scissors you know, sometimes I can be pretty brutal. I use my scissors. Um, every <laughs> now and then, I think in the air and use my rotary cutter and my ruler. But scissors are okay too. Especially if you have well, and there's nothing wrong with it if you're just cutting on that drawn line. It doesn't need to be super accurate. That's right. That's right. So we're going to do it again. All right. We're going to take the other one, fold it in half, fold in the top in half. We're going to create. A little imaginary crease. Some crease that that line right there, so you have a reference point to put your uh, stitch line. Okay. So open that back up. Remember, quarter inch from from the crease. Turn it around. Quarter inch from the crease. Gonna take it off and we're gonna cut it. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna open it up. Once we cut these, we have our half square triangles. So we're gonna open these up, press it open. All right, okay. so remember, press the red side to the dark side. Okay, you don't want the dark side or the blue showing through the red. But no worries, all right? No stress, all right? It's only fabric, it's only fabric. Don't cut yourself around the wheel. No worries. That's right. Now, I, let me let me ask you again, because I'm changing up what I'm going to do a little bit to match you. It's just going to be a smaller block instead of being fancy and putting a small uh -huh. churn dash in the middle. Um, uh -huh. What color did you say you were putting in the middle? I'm going with a white. White. Okay, good. 
So you're Let's gonna do, do uh, a blue and the the blue and the red will be the stripes and the half square triangles. Uh huh. Perfect. So I got, I'm okay. right because I, you know I, I didn't want to overdo it with just red and red and uh and blue. So I have a white got piece it. that I pre five inch piece, and we're gonna fit that got in. It. Okay. So now that you've pressed open your half square triangles, you can you know to keep yourself on point, you just start setting them up. All right. So we're going with blue, right? We're going with the blue. So I'm going to turn my blue half square triangles in. Blue in. All right? I got to do it this way because I will I will lose myself if I don't do it this way. I got to keep myself on track. All right, so what do we have left? We have our two other pieces that we have left over, right? Remember those? When we cut that in half and we cut it in half again, we got two left. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do is Go to the machine, and we're going to put a crease down one side, flip it around. And I'm sorry, put a stitch line down one side, flip it around, and put a stitch line down the other side. So you have a stitch line going down one side here and one side here because we're going to cut it down the middle and open it up. Okay? So let's go ahead Makes and sense. put a stitch line down. Go ahead. And here. I have not, I have not, I'm not working with pre-cut, so I am fast trying to catch up with you because I've got little, all these little rectangles to right. sew. <laughs> okay, so, you know, when I first heard about this uh, block, I was like, you know, I, I've never, I've seen it before, and I've seen it in quotes before, but I never really wanted to, uh, it wasn't like I never wanted to, I just never had the opportunity to because I'm so, I'm so, uh, I'm so distracted by color, you know? I'm a typical Marine. You throw some crayons on the floor and I'll be distracted for half the day, okay? So I keep looking for color. And then when you mentioned the churn dash, I looked it up and I was like, oh wow, that is a very nice block. So I figured, hey, let's let's try to make this. And then right at the time we were talking, a buddy of mine called, he said, yeah, man, could you make me a quilt, please? I'm like, no worries, brother, I got you. So I, I thought, why not even, why not, try the trend dash for a marine and i think it's it's going it's going to come out great i can't wait to get it going yeah i can't wait to see the red and the blue lined up next to each other in the stripes i think that's just going to definitely like scream marine i think that's going to be amazing yeah and the the white in the middle will definitely calm it down but i, I you know i've actually been looking I'm, you know i'm going to search for my uh, my favorite fabric. My wife said I'll probably never find it again. And that's that brother and sister design fabric, man. I love I love that pattern. And I, I was gonna I wanted to uh, kaleidoscope that fabric, but we'll see. All right, so we're going down each side here. Remember, just two sides, okay? Okay. Okay, so we have these two pieces and they're stitched down either side. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut right up the middle and then open it up, okay? So let's lay it out. So what you want to do is you want to measure that, okay? So this this piece is, is four inches wide. So you got to go two and a half inch. No, wait, one, two, three. I'm sorry, five inches. I'm sorry, five inches. So you got to measure in two and a half inches to get a precise cut, okay? So we're going to measure okay. in. Two and a half inches, one, two and a half. And we're gonna throw a nice cut in here, okay? No worries. Relax. Relax. All right, we got one. I'll bring the other one over. Same thing. Five and a half, I mean, five inch block. We're gonna cut at two and a half inches. You have a nice quarter inch seam on there, so you should get a good a good measurement. All right. So we're gonna go ahead and put that down at two and a half. We're gonna cut. All right. Be careful with your rotary cutter. All right. Quilts are not supposed to have blood on them. All right. So now we've made our cut. Now all we're gonna do is open that up. All right. Remember, we're gonna press to the dark side. Okay. Open that up, 
press to the dark side. Press to the dark side. You're going to be doing that four times. Remember, you, you, are, you cut four pieces. Dark side. Press to the dark oh. side. Okay. I think my iron go? is nice and right. hot. Right back. Yep, 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 yep. I'm pressing all my little rail fence pieces and my half square triangles. I have all the same seams that you do. So I right. think I am caught up because I, the next step is just sewing the block That's together. All right, so now you're just going to put your pieces down, okay? Rail fences down. All right, blue to the inside, right? Blue to the inside. Yep. Blue to the inside. All right. Glue to the inside. Man, that's coming out pretty cool. <laughs> glue to the inside. And our one white piece, remember that white piece? So that goes to the center. Man, I need to get my camera and take a picture. The thing looks all right. <laughs> well, go go take a picture because I got to square up my half square triangles. I I can hold it up. Or, it looks oh, beautiful. That's nice. All right. That's what I'm talking about. And those okay. conga treats are really nice too. Those are batiks, right? Yes, they are. You know, and I have a secret love for batiks. So Amen. Between, me too. Between <laughs> me and you, there's a, a local uh, quilt shop near us that you know it's near my it's near where I work. So I go by there quite often. So I'll slide in and they have a big room full of batiks, and I'll just be wandering around in there looking at batiks. Yeah, there's um down by where my mom lives, it's near the, it's about an hour north of the Tennessee, Virginia border. There's a place called Batiks, Batiks, et cetera, et cetera. It's in Virginia, but it's an hour north of that Tennessee border on 81. Uh -huh. They have got a ton of Batiks and upstairs, the little known secret is upstairs. There is a sale room. Oh, you can get Batiks like 70% off up there. If you hit the, you hit the right sale. Yeah. I close my mouth. I'm drooling. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's all batik. Well, no, they have some quilters cotton, but they have the largest selection of batik bolts that I've seen in the state anywhere. Oh, um, yeah. I am a fan of batiks. My next, you know, uh, I, Georgia, my next Georgia beauty will be all batiks again. I think. Yeah, and you just finished one too, didn't you? Um, well, I just quilted it. <laughs> yeah, I finished it like last year. <laughs> but you know, but you, you know just how... finished quilting uh, it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now we got our pieces, right? So all we're going to do is remember where we are, and we're going to start putting them together. So I'm going to put the top row together first, center row, bottom row. Okay? So let's go ahead and take the top row. I'm going to go ahead and put that together. All right, so those of you who are wondering, um, dog ears. Some people like to take dog ears off right away. Me personally, I'm not, I, it doesn't affect me in any way. I'm not offended by dog ears. Um, you know, most of the time I won't, I won't take them off unless they're like really obvious, but I, you know, it's up to you. I mean, it, it, each his own, but me personally, I, I just leave dog ears where they are unless they're like super obvious because later on when I square it off, They'll get caught in there. That's right. Oh, whoa, we got we got fun people happening in the chat. One of the moderators could get him. There we go. Somebody asked about your center block. Was there a star on it? Did they see a star? Yeah, yes, there, yeah, there was, because the center block came from a, a 10 inch that had this pattern on it. So, you know, I cut it down just because I thought it was really nice because it had the star. So I just thought I'd throw it in there. Because the other the other white uh, block had these subdued, had subdued circles on it. And I didn't think that that would show up very well. Okay. So I, the am, graffiti, I, guess. I am catching up real fast. So when we, when we laid out our pieces, all the blue goes towards the center and all the red goes towards the outside, right? Oh, yeah. Where you at, Beck? Where you at? Uh, well, I'm looking for my white piece that seems to, oh, it's right here. I'm ready to sew. Let's do it. <laughs> all right, 
Let's do it. Let's do it. So I'm putting a quarter inch seam on my top row, put, attaching the three tops, top pieces together. All right. How row. are you, talk to me about how you're pressing your seams. So I'm gonna press my seams. Oh, so on the three, I press them to the outside. So from okay. the center, I'll be pushing these seams out this way, in this direction. Okay. All right, press that open. Let's turn that baby over. I got my first row. Look at that. Oh yeah. Oh wow. What 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 colors? What what uh, fabrics are you using, Ben? I'm not using batiks, though. I'll confess that I had a couple of fat quarters pulled and sitting on my table for the whole week. Um, I'm actually using the thatched line by Robin Pickens. It's a I'm not a big one for just plain solids. I think they're boring. So if I do go for a solid, I need something that reads as a solid, but it's got to have some texture in there. That's exactly how I am. Like if it's a solid, it's got to kick you in the mouth. If it doesn't kick me in the mouth, then it won't, it won't even get a second look. I think the okay. only time I will consider a solid is if I'm using it for a background. Yes. I'm using solids on this, on the marine quilt, on the marine um, um, churn dash, but I'm only using it to so that you can pick that solid, match that solid with the pattern inside the mark pad. Well, I think in that case, the color speaks volumes for what you're doing, and you almost don't even need the print. That would be my own personal preference, but I think you're going to be okay. All right, I got my three rows sewn together. Oh, wow, you passed me. <laughs> what? I passed you? That's a first. That's a first that I passed anybody. <laughs> oh, wow. Normally, I'm dead last every time. <laughs> wow. All right, let me, let, me, let me go ahead and get this done. <laughs> a little less talk and a little more sewing over there, Mark. <laughs> so we are cooking with butter here. Alright, All right, so I got my three rows. Now it's time to put the three rows together. I'm giving mine a good press before I assemble those three rows together. I, the more I take, the more times I take a second to press those seams, the flatter everything is and the easier it is to get under the machine and get things lined up. That's right. Definitely. I understand. And I do the We're same thing. Good. We're going to nest those seams as best we can. And taking my first row seam. Here we go. Got one more row to take. One more row to go. One more row to go. Oh, I love it. It looks so great. This is going to be awesome. Right, nest, do a little bit of nesting. Got to nest like eagles. I, I used to nest like a penguin, but now I can nest like a <laughs> Nest like a penguin. <laughs> I don't think I've heard that. <laughs> All right.
Not bad for a guy who used to throw hand grenades. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody can do anything they set their mind to, whether it's throwing hand grenades or playing with fabric and thread. You just take practice. So That's let me cool. ask you a question. Did you get you got that email from our from our friend? Yeah. Just making sure she's yes. been talking about you. She's been talking yes. about you. Good, yes. good, good. Good, good, good. August. I won't say anything else. Spoiler alert, I mean, you can set your story to share. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. All right, we got back. Let me see it. Hold on. Let me see. Hold on. I got my starch on the other side of the room. That's what I got. Let me go get that. Whoop. Let's see. We're gonna go ahead and gnarly up the edges here. So, uh, you know, sometimes, you know, you'll get a little bit of wonkiness on the edges. And that's, that's okay. You know, once, once I get it together, that's when I square it. I square it off. And I'll knock down that, uh, that unevenness. But sometimes sometimes it comes together really good. But I don't take, I don't take personal offense to it because... This thing's going to somebody's house. It's not going on the wall. The day, the day you see one of my quilts in front of somebody with a clipboard is the day I stop quilting. <laughs> Nothing's gonna go into. A, I'm not making anything for a quilt show. I'm not saying quilt shows are bad. I yeah. just know. I know my lane. I know my lane, and yeah, I know exactly. when things are off a little bit, it still covers you up. There were, yeah, there was a time when I would. Uh, and I would give a, a quilt, and then I would point out the puckers. Look, there's a pucker here, but that means it's in love with you. It's puckering for you. Now I, I just love that. <laughs> All right, let me show you what I got. Here we go. Oh wow, Beck, that's mm -hmm. nice. That's what kind of red but is that? But this is that's that thatched from Robin Pickens. It's wow. got just a little that's... bit of texture in there. You see it? It's a serious red. Yeah, it's it's a it's a good patriotic. All block. right, that's what I'm talking about. All right, so um, that was easy. Yeah, it was. <laughs> so all you gotta do is do that. What? How many more times? <laughs> about about fifteen more. Times you got yourself a quilt. Cool. Well, I'm not gonna do it fifteen more times. <laughs> well, okay. With mine, you don't need that. <laughs> <laughs> about four times. About four or five, you'll be good. Hold on, let me put it right here. Yeah, that's true. That's the nice thing about those blocks being so big that you really just need to make that block like five or six times and you're done. I, you think I, about I, a 12 inch block. Yes, yes. See, I, I, I enjoy big quilts because I want, I, I imagine somebody wrapping themselves in my quilt, you know, and laying on the couch and eating cookies and spilling milk on it. That's what I love about quilting, you know? If, yep. if, if one of my quilts is on a wall, I think I'd be offended. You don't want to wear my quilt? You want to put it on the wall? Well, <laughs> the small ones I can't cover up with, so those can go on the wall. Yeah. But the, yeah, the big ones, I, I hate it when I, I, I spend small, time making one. I got a small one somewhere, I think I wrap my feet with it, but that's about it. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> all big quilts, all the time. Time. <laughs> so how tall are you? I'm six feet. Okay, the, that's how tall my husband is. I'm oh, so we're the average height of an American male. Anything below six feet is below average. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I you're probably pulling my leg, but I have no way of knowing. <laughs> yeah, look, look at, I, you know what? I think it's even shorter. I think it might be. 5'11 or 5'10, but that means I'm above average then. <laughs> there you go. 5'10, you're above average. Jason has cousins, and all of his cousins, all of his guy cousins are like 6'5, six 6'7, six and he's six. So he always says he's the runt of the family. <laughs> <laughs> never, never. He'll never be. Never. At six feet, there's no such thing as a six foot runt. 
Yeah. So we so, gonna be working on. I don't know. Like I'm all done. That but, <laughs> this is a, this is this is record. I'm done. Yeah, but you're gonna, gonna put together. What kind of quilt you gonna put together though? Oh, 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 yeah. So my my project for this, the reason why I'm not gonna make more of these is because you are the first in a new series that I want to do. I do want to do a quilt of valor, and I might actually just whip up. I might buy some red, white, and blue, just like mm -hmm. this and make the 13 inch blocks that you did and just make it big, put them together, quilt it and get it done and over with. Um, and I really, oh. right, like, and look how, could you just imagine like if this was big and maybe if we did like a white sashing around each one to really make it yeah. pop, I think that would be amazing. White, yeah, because white's gonna be on my marine quilt because white is the color of our dress cover. There you go. There you go. I do a nice white sashing around each one. Make the blocks super big, loud and proud, in your face. Get that yes. red, white, and blue right there. And then maybe big, if I can find a home. fun print for the border. Go big or go home. That's yeah. right. That's right. That's um, but for what I'm going to do with this block, so what I, I'm starting to do, and you're the first one in the series, is I want to have... I've been doing more collabs with other YouTube content creators and I want to bring them on the channel and make something with them. And I'm going to try to make a nine inch block of whatever we're doing, whatever project we're working on, something to memori memorialize, I can't even talk, but memorialize the, uh, the time that we spent together. And then at the oh, end of the series, yeah. I'll have all these blocks that remind me of the time that we sat and talked, chatted. Great idea. That's a great idea. Yeah. And you're block number one, Mark. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> so we got a couple of comments in the chat that i'll read out and you can answer those if you'd like um okay. vr wants to know what kind of wall are you using behind you talk about your design wall mark <laughs> oh, okay. it's um it's that pink uh cork board cork board that you buy in uh, home depot you want to want to see it let, let me show it no i'm gonna show it to you no so it's this stuff right here. Can you see it? No. Nah, not really. So see that stuff right there? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's covered up with a flannel sheet. Now I'm looking for a camouflage panel flannel to throw on here. Some staples, okay. some, some some tape, and you got yourself a display wall. Yep. And I remember, I remember seeing your video about a week or so ago where you're talking about like remodeling your sewing room. Oh is yeah. This, okay. Is this it or is this a temporary no, no, solution? No, no, no. Not, okay, we're, I'm going all in and I'm gonna copy your, your back wall because I have some shelves that I wanna stack and put my fabric. Yeah, I wanna put some fabrics up and also some I love me trophies that people wanna see and that's it. But I, you know, I, I got the design um, layout i just haven't started i just need to start yeah but, you know I'll it takes a little while in, like you know i'll do that later i'll do the quilt room later and, and now i'm like enthralled with the new churn dash so yeah we'll, we'll do it it's gonna come it's gonna come i mean it took us 30 minutes to get through one and we taught you how to do it so can, if you can imagine how fast it would have been if i just would have gone and opened up a layer cake and a charm pack it would have been bing, bang, boom, oh, done, yeah. right? Oh, wait a minute. I have a layer cake and a charm, da char charm pack. Like, what am I doing? I don't have to go buy more fabric. I go get the pre-cuts. <laughs> <laughs> I do learn. No I do learn. catch up. <laughs> <laughs> Quiltessa said, you are so tall that your quilts must be long. How long on average yeah. do you know about how long you make your quilts? I haven't, I haven't, there's, it's rare that I make a quilt smaller than a queen. Very rare. Okay. Well, that's just for my so grandsons. Uh, everything else I make is queen size or bigger. So when you make those, when you make those big queen size quilts, how do you quilt mm -hmm. them? I don't. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, you know, I live in the ditch. I, I was king of the ditch. I live in the ditch until until I got my Bernina and now man free motion and ruler quilting is to die for. I love it. I absolutely love it. I will I'll probably never be in a ditch again. Yeah. 
once but, you yeah, once you step the, into that creative world up, i will lift the quilt up in half and tuck it under my chin you know and then quilt away and then let some go and pull up under my chin and you know, you know how it goes you know uh, yep, yep. You got to wrestle it under the needle. That's, it's that's, a right, that's like <laughs> machines with big throats. I love anything, any machine with a big throat. Sign me up. How how much throat space does that Bernina have? Um, don't I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't. More Let than your measure. brother. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Let me measure. Oh. It is he's got rulers and measuring. Thing. Oh, 10 inches. Oh, that's not bad. That's respectable. That's pretty respectable. Yeah. We're talking about Bernina. Look, pinky in the air. Bernina. <laughs> Bernina. <laughs> Is that the one that the guy sent to you? Yeah. With the label yeah. and stuff on it? Yeah. Hey, my guy, my guys over at So yeah. They they and 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 the subscribers. They and did. They, yep. Yeah, it was it was it was great. It was emotional for me. I remember that. I remember that. So what are your plans going forward when you're talking about free motion quilting and ruler work and things like that? Are you, are you ever going to, do you see yourself ever stepping into a long arm or is it free motion on the table? Hey, sound hey, only? Hey. That's a great question, but I'm not, I have a CFO and my CFO has approved these kind of purchases. Oh, I see. I see. I see. <laughs> <laughs> you got to write the proposal and sign it up. <laughs> If I can get you and the subscribers to go, go ahead and motivate my CFO, we might be able to get a long arm. But you know, to be honest, I actually want a mid arm and not a long arm. I think a, I think a long arm is kind of, I don't know, I think a long arm is like out of control. I think a mid arm would be perfect. Mm. Like well, you know, they got the... They got the smaller long arms now, like the Moxie and the Baby Lock Gallant, and they're the same price point as a mid arm. They take up, well, no, you can get them on a 10 foot frame, so they would still take up a lot of space, but uh, they're the same price point. For me personally, I had a mid arm. I, lo I loved it, and I outgrew it really quickly, and I just started resenting it because I didn't want to wrestle the quilt under the needle. And it, you could have all the throat space in the world, but it just didn't make it didn't make it any better. What you do, what you do is you convince your CFO that there could be a return on investment and you could do quilts for hire. I just I just I just want to give you the ideas. I don't actually want to do any of the work. <laughs> I'll, you I'll got a couple tonight. of people. You'll pitch it tonight. <laughs> look, look, I'm looking over. <laughs> Yvonne's in the chat. She was like, you're acting like I'm not even here. <laughs> <laughs> and we hear you. We see you. <laughs> so what are, what are your plans for this weekend? It's Mother's Day weekend. What do you got going on this weekend? So I want to make some sushi for my wife. She loves sushi. I know how to make it, so why not do it? Wait, you make sushi? Oh, yes, I, I cook. <laughs> my wife loves that I cook. I cook. I'm a guy that cooks. I even started recording some 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 dishes, right, Ben? So eventually, we'll be releasing the the cooking marine. Yeah. We'll see. Channel number we'll see. two. Well, I, you know, everybody's cooking. I don't know. I, you know, we'll see. But I, 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 I've made a lot of recording. I've, I've recorded quite a few dishes. Right, quite a few dishes. So we'll see how it goes. I'm, I'm not too sure about it. You know, and my, I love my cool things. So I don't want that to take away from what I'm doing here. And I need this. This is, this is me. Yeah. This is yep, my. I get it. I get it. Well, Mark, we've been live for about 45 minutes. I kind of out of topics to talk about. We finished the project so doggone quick. 
I don't know how. Oh, I can. <laughs> I can share my screen and go into the Facebook group and show everybody what were what they worked on. We can take a look at what they did, but I don't know what that's going to do to the camera. So I'm going to hit a share screen button. It's going to go over into the Facebook group. So you should be able to see right along with me what folks are posting in the Facebook group and we can kind of enjoy that together. And then, you know, it's a it's a holiday weekend for me. It's Mother's Day, no so I might call it early. <laughs> for dinner. Let's I'm not worry. Let me see what we have got in the group and then I will share the screen. Just give me one second. And then I think I click this button. Start screen sharing. Mm, this one. All right. Oh, unable to. Nope. That won't be happening tonight. Thank you. You're welcome. I have not set system permissions <laughs> for this app to share a screen. And the only way I can do that is to close the app and start all over. And we won't be doing that. <laughs> so we'll save it for next time. <laughs> I'm here for you. Whenever you're ready, yep. we'll do another one. Yeah, absolutely. And maybe next time we'll we'll have to come up with something a little bit more challenging than a churn dash that we did in like 20 all right. minutes. All right. Don't push your luck now. Don't push your luck. <laughs> well, you know, to be honest with you, this is a new series, right? It's something new that I wanted to do. It's a new, it's new tech and it's also Friday night. So I wanted to make sure that whatever I was doing tonight, I wasn't pushing too many new things because all it takes is one of those to fail. And then it would just send everything completely off and left field. So I figured an easy block <laughs> using new technology with a guest if worst case scenario, everything went perfectly and we finished early. So that's what happened. You're awesome. You no taught worries. this in record time. No worries. Hey, 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 I love it. I, anytime you need me, I'm here for you. You have your own room awesome. on standby. So let me know. I love that. I love that. All right, guys, if you haven't, if you are watching on the Sobeka channel, channel and you have not checked out the Quilting Marine, make sure to look him up on YouTube, hop over to his channel, check out his videos and give him a, subscri a little subscribe. If you're watching on the Quilting Marine channel and you like anything that I'm doing, feel free to hop over, Go. check out Sobeka, and you can check out my videos and subscribe too. Yes, please do. If you're a subscriber of, me, of mine, go over to Sobeka and subscribe. Awesome. All we can do awesome, is support awesome, awesome. As, as content creators. That's absolutely right. There's room for all of us. We all have our own different brand and just keep promoting each other. So, okay, right. Mark, I'm going to go spend some time with the hubby. I will right. talk to you later. Thank you for hanging out with me. Bye, Yvonne. No. I know you're in the background. Thanks, Becca. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Bye-bye.